Okay, so let's talk about the wedding contract. This is the third movie in Hallmark's June Weddings series, and it's a Jewish one. So uh, we've had a handful of Jewish movies from Hallmark the last couple years, and I do love them. I love seeing a glimpse into a different culture and religion and um, just find the traditions and practices um, really interesting but I never know if Hallmark got it right or not. <laughs> so if you know, please comment below and educate the rest of us. Um, the actors, uh, Becca Tobin and Jake Epstein are both Jewish. So hopefully with them on set, um, they would have corrected anything that wasn't correct. <laughs> um, and Karen Berger, the writer, uh, has written a lot of Hallmark, including some of the previous Jewish ones. So hopefully everything was right. Um, if you know, comment below and let us know. Uh, so overall, I thought this was cute. Uh, I think they're almost too cute as a couple. Um, we first meet them when Jake trips over her legs, uh, which was funny. I laughed, uh, but she apologizes and says it's her fault, which it was absolutely not her fault. Um, if Jake's if Jake was running um, close enough to those people on benches that he would trip over their legs, he was too close to them. So it was all his fault. Um, and then we get a really interesting um, sort of montage through the opening credits uh, showing their dating history since the movie skips to their engagement. So we miss all of that. So I thought that was a creative way to give us a look um, at their courtship but the way they did it with um, like pictures but they were drawings um, I don't know if they ran it through a filter or if it was an AI thing um, some of the pictures were cute and some were creepy <laughs> um, I don't know if anyone else thought that but but yeah some of them were a little creepy um, so we get to the movie and they've been dating for like six months and he is meeting her family and um that goes well i love jake epstein um he plays that kind of adorable awkward dork <laughs> so well um and he's just so endearing and um love him so he meets the family they get engaged and then it basically just becomes a wedding planning movie um the the two moms uh, thankfully did not get too stereotypically over-the-top monster in-law moms um, if you saw my last review about loves great to me you know that I cannot stand that trope uh, so every time I thought they were about to cross the line um, they stopped short and I ended up really liking the moms um, and in the end they kind of come together to save the day uh, so that was good. Um, the, the little boy, um, he was not listed on IMDb. So whoever played Kevin, um, he is the cutest thing. Um, he stole the show. Uh, he, yeah, like if you haven't seen the movie, you have to watch just for Kevin. Um, he, ugh. I don't know how many times I can say adorable, but he is adorable. Um, so that is sad because he's one of her students um, and he's got the biggest little crush on her. So anyways, it's cute. You have to watch it for Kevin. Um, so we, every time I thought there was about to be the conflict, um, they actually like discuss the situation like adults and resolved it <laughs> um the fact that he got this promotion and they wanted him to move across the country and he told her right away i mean she was not okay with it but then okay with it within the space of like 10 seconds so i feel like in real life that would have been a longer conversation um but again, this is Hallmark, it's a 90 minute movie and they don't have the time to get too deep into the mess of things. So I just accepted that. 
Um, but the conflict that we do finally get, <sighs> super annoyed. Um, so Jake gets this promotion and then is all of a sudden working super hard to um, make sure this top client is happy and satisfied and doing everything for him. And of course the client is um, wanting all these last minute things. And so Jake's having to do all this travel and back and forth. And then we're like, like the week of the wedding and he has to go and he doesn't want to go. I mean, obviously he wants to stay there and help with wedding stuff and be there for her, but he also wants to stay employed. <laughs> So it just bugged me how we finally get to this kind of conflict climax where he's trying to get back for the rehearsal and everything is going wrong. His flight was like delayed. So he missed that. And then he was going to take a train and that didn't work out. So he rented a car and then the car runs out of gas. Um, I mean, I think they were trying to make us mad at his character for doing all this work stuff. Um, but I was totally team Jake. Um, I can't think of his character's name, but I was team Jake. Like he's doing everything to get back to his fiance and back to his wedding and trying so hard. And I did not feel like anyone was understanding of his side of the story. Um, like obviously he wanted to be there. And you being mad at him for things that were out of his control does not help the situation. Um, so the line that she says, um, it's after he got back to the rehearsal late and it was that night and she was upset and she was talking to her mom, I think. And she says something like, um, if he doesn't have time for a wedding, he's not going to have time for a marriage. Something like that. Um, and it just bugged me. Like you've been dating him for six plus months now, you know, he's not always like this with his job. Like it just so happens that this incredibly stressful time at work lined up with the fast tracked <laughs> wedding. And it's just one of those things. And he's trying to make the best of it and do all the things that he can do. Um, and like, I'm so sorry your fiance wants to stay employed so he can provide for you and Henry and the twins. Was it Henry or Harry? I can't remember. Um, and I just did not feel like anyone appreciated how hard he was trying to do it all. Um, I don't know. I find a lot of things annoying when the conflict is about someone having to work. Unless they just make it real obvious that like they would rather be at work and um, you know they're not really invested in the relationship. But that was not the case here. And I just felt like she wasn't giving him the benefit of the doubt. Um, like there's no reason that should have made her question his love for her, you know? So I don't know. Maybe that was just me. Let me know if you even noticed that line. Did it bug you too? Or I mean, did you think he was terrible for trying to stay employed and not lose his job? Um, I mean, we can get into the contract conversation if you want, how, um, they were doing everything to appease this big client um, in order to get him to sign the contract when really like they should have not been doing any of this stuff if he had not signed the contract yet. Like they were going to move him across the country for this guy and the guy hadn't even signed the contract yet. Um, the guy being Garfield Wilson, who um, we love. So I don't know. It just... It just bugged me. <laughs> um, but then we get to the wedding, of course. Um, they get married. And we had a little eye rolly gift of the magi moment um, where 
you know, she quits her job, but didn't tell him. And then he quit his job and didn't tell her. Um, and then of course it works out fine. Um, so that was all wrapped up in a pretty little eye roll bow. Um, so overall it was cute. It was fine. It was a standard Hallmark movie. Um, I, I do like Becca and Jake. Um, and I thought the writing was done well. I mean, there were parts that made me laugh, um, and cry, um, when he saw his, um, his dad's prayer shawl in the chuppah. Um, yes, I teared up. Um, but overall it was also just a really a slow movie and it wasn't necessarily slow in a boring way because there was stuff happening. Um, I mean, it wasn't crazy exciting, but, uh, I just kept looking at the time and being shocked at how much time was left to go. So I'm not like in a rush to watch it again. If I had Hallmark on in the background and it came on, I wouldn't turn it off. Um, but I'm, you know, I don't see myself seeking it out again to watch. Um, just nothing against Becca or Jake or the Jewish culture. <laughs> um, it was just kind of a slow status quo movie for me, which, um, you know, I haven't loved any of the June weddings so far. And honestly, this whole 2023 season so far, there have only been a couple of um, clear winners. So you should definitely give it a watch. Um, it's definitely worth, you know, one viewing at least. And there are people out there that are just raving about it. So uh, don't take just my review for it. Um, go watch it yourself and let me know what you thought. Um, and we will talk next time about the final June Weddings movie, um, which I am blanking on the name of Make Me a Match. Um, so yeah, I will link that right here, I think. Um, and I'll see you next time.